In this video, I'm going to show you how to pay off your mortgage early using a step-by-step -step Excel tutorial. Starting with a blank spreadsheet, I'll begin by showing you how mortgage interest is calculated. After that, I'll show you four strategies to pay off your mortgage years ahead of schedule and save on interest charges. And finally, I'll show you how the four strategies compare in terms of their effectiveness so that you can decide which ones fit your situation the best. I'm confident about these four strategies because I've personally used them to pay off the 25-year variable rate mortgage on my house within eight years. Okay, let's jump right in. So how is mortgage interest calculated? When buying a house, the main number that people focus on is the monthly payment. While this number is important from an affordability perspective, it's also important to consider the interest on the loan. The higher the interest rate, the more interest you will pay. But this detail can be buried in a monthly payment that looks affordable. This information is also available in a document called the Mortgage Amortization Table, which shows all the monthly payments and interest paid over the life of the mortgage. You can request this document from your lender, but it helps to understand the math behind this table. So let's build it from scratch. Opening up a blank Excel spreadsheet, there are four inputs to this table. The principal, which is the loan amount, the annual interest rate for the loan, the term, which is the duration of the loan, usually denoted in years, the payment frequency, which is typically monthly, and the monthly payment amount to pay down the loan. For the purpose of this example, let's assume a $500,000 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 5% annual interest rate. The basic setup of this table has five columns. The first column of this table denotes the number of payments. In this example, that ends up being 30 years, which equals 360 months or 360 payments. The second column is the principal balance outstanding at the start of each month. For month one, the beginning balance is $500,000. The third column calculates the interest charge for the month. Take the annual interest rate and divide by 12 to get the monthly interest rate. Multiply this monthly interest rate with the beginning balance to get the interest charge for the first month. Make the reference to the monthly interest rate cell as absolute by pressing F4 on your keyboard. The fourth column is for the payment amount for each month. Make an absolute reference to the payment field for every month in the table. We can leave the payment field empty for now. The fifth column is the principal balance outstanding at the end of the month. It's calculated by taking the beginning balance, adding the interest charge, and subtracting the payment. This completes the calculation for one payment cycle. The beginning balance for the second month is the ending balance from the first month. The calculation for interest charge and ending balance remain the same. Now copy this formula to all 360 months. The ending balance at month 360 is quite large instead of reducing down to zero. This is because no payments have been made yet. And this brings us to the payment column. When no payment is made, the interest charge accrues and is added to the principal balance. Over time, this will result in the ending balance increasing. For example, this can be problematic if you have an outstanding student loan or credit card debt that is not being serviced. Paying any amount less than or equal to the interest amount will not reduce the principal balance outstanding. A quick side note, this is also known as a negative amortization loan. Some lenders will not let this happen. Rather, they will either force you to make a payment to reduce the loan balance or make you repay the entire loan. Keeping that in mind, it's fairly intuitive that in order to pay down the loan, the payment amount for each month must be greater than the interest amount. There are two ways to determine the payment amount. First, we can brute force it through trial and error until the ending balance is zero or close to zero. Using this approach, a payment amount of $2,684 gets us close to a zero ending balance. Alternatively, we can use the payment function in Excel to get a more precise number. The inputs to the payment function are the monthly interest rate, the number of payment periods, 
the starting loan balance, the ending balance, which should be zero, and the payment type, which is zero in this case. This approach gets us a more precise payment amount, leading to a zero ending balance. To show how much principal is being paid down each month, I created a new column called Principal Paid. The formula for this column is the payment amount minus the interest charge. Next to it is the Principal Paid as a percent of the payment amount. Copy this formula for the rest of the table. As you can see, the amount of principal paid in month 1 is only 22% of the payment amount. Most of the payment is going towards interest. It's not until closer to month 360 that a majority of the monthly payment goes towards principal. I also added a sum function above the table to display the total interest paid. In the top right corner is a summary section to track the total interest paid, the duration of the loan, and any savings from using the four strategies. Let's call this example as regular. The total interest paid is $466,000 with a loan term of 30 years. There are no savings to note here because this is the benchmark. Now that we understand the mechanics of a mortgage, here are the four strategies to shorten the term of the loan and reduce the amount of interest paid. The first strategy is to make extra payments in addition to your regular payments. Let's say you had $100 each month and wanted to use it towards paying down the loan in addition to the regular monthly payment. To see how this would work, I added a column next to payment and called it extra payment. I also updated the formula for ending balance to capture the extra payment as a reduction similar to regular payments. I also updated the formula for principal paid to capture the extra payment. After updating the table for the extra payments and updating the summary section, let's see the impact of this strategy. It's clear that the extra payments have had an impact. The total interest paid is $424,000, which is a $43,000 reduction compared to the regular scenario. The loan term also reduced by more than two years. The second strategy is to double your monthly payments. Some lenders let you double up your regular monthly payments. This works in the same manner as before, except the extra payment amount equals your monthly payment amount. After updating the extra payments column and updating the summary section, let's see the impact of this strategy. The total interest paid is $134,000, which is a $332,000 reduction compared to the regular scenario. The duration of the loan also reduced by approximately 20 years. This is a dramatic reduction in the overall cost and duration of the mortgage. I recognize that not everyone has this much extra cash every month, but the key point here is that you can make this extra payment when you do have the cash. It can be a combination of small and large extra payments. The third strategy is to make annual prepayments. Some lenders let you make prepayments on the mortgage throughout the year up to a certain dollar amount. For example, my lender let me pay up to 15% of the original principal balance every year. Let's say you received a bonus of $50,000 at work and want to make a prepayment for that amount in month 12. After updating the summary section, let's see the impact of this strategy. The total interest paid is $322,000, which is a $134,000 reduction compared to the regular scenario. The $50,000 prepayment more than paid for itself in savings. The loan term also reduced by more than five and a half years. The fourth strategy is to change the payment frequency to bi-weekly payments. You can make this change with your lender, but let's see how this strategy impacts the regular scenario. There are 52 weeks in the year. Dividing that by two gives us 26 bi-weekly periods. Dividing that by two gives us 13 months equivalent in a year. This means that we make one extra monthly payment in a year using a bi-weekly payment frequency. The easiest manner of showing the impact of this strategy is to take a monthly amount, divide it by 12, and apply it as an extra payment every month. This results in one extra month of payment every year. After updating the summary section, let's see the impact of this strategy. 
The total interest paid is $381,000, which is a $85,000 reduction compared to the regular scenario. The loan term also reduced by just over four and a half years. The summary view shows us that doubling the payments is the most effective strategy if you have the cash available. The strategy is then followed by making annual prepayments, changing to a bi-weekly payment frequency, and finally making extra payments whenever possible. You can deploy any one of these strategies either individually or in a combination. For example, to pay off my mortgage early, I made annual prepayments and switched to a bi-weekly payment frequency. These four strategies work on the variation of one common principle, which is to make extra payments. Extra payments contribute fully towards paying down the principal. This makes it potent in increasing the speed of paying down the loan, which then has the added benefit of reducing the total interest charges. But a word of caution. These four strategies rely on the discretion of your lender. Before you try any of these methods, check with your lender to see if you are even allowed. The last thing you want is being charged a penalty for being offside on the terms and conditions of your loan. If you found this video useful, please return the favor by giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. It's completely free and helps the channel immensely. Also consider sharing the video with someone who might find it useful. I'll see you in the next one.